My next guest is a very talented photographer, and she uh, specializes in taking pictures of, uh, of what I call rock stars, uh, music people. Uh, her latest is an offering about the great Bruce Springsteen, my hero. Uh, here it is, Bruce Springsteen in Focus, 1980 to 2012, photographed by my next guest, Deborah L. Rothenberg. What's up, Deborah? Hey there. How you doing? There's the book. A uh, great picture of Bruce. Now, where is Bruce here? He's in a parking lot. That's typical Springsteen, biggest rock star in the world, and he's just walking through a parking lot by he, a car. He's outside the Wonder Bar in Asbury Park. That looks like Asbury. Now, what is he going to do? He was filming the One Step Up, Two Steps Back video. Oh, on he was? February so, 15th, 1988. Okay, so this is in the late 80s. Yes. Okay, yeah, and uh, what, you just were just hanging out and you saw me, looks you happy. No, actually, it was three days before my birthday, my 26th birthday, right. and it was President's Day, and okay. it was a beautiful, nice day out for February, uh -huh. and I was driving through Bradley Beach on my way to Asbury to go to a boat show, Right. and I see this old car coming toward me, and I love old cars, Yeah. so I, I glance at the license plate to see what year it was, it says 57 Chevy. Wow. Or 57 Ford. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. And I look up at the driver, and I was like, oh, my God. And the windows <laughs> were down. He was really close. And he looks at me, and he smiles. Right. And I, I saw that they cut down toward Ocean Avenue, so I cut down toward Ocean Avenue. Right. And it was probably the only time in my life I ever went out without my camera. Uh -huh. So I rushed back to my apartment. I was living in Belmar at the time. Wow. And I called my two friends, Billy Smith and Stephen Bumble. They were running the Asbury Park Rock and Roll Museum at the time. Right. And I called them up. I said, I just saw Bruce. In Bradley Beach, he's near the ocean, so they rushed. That's back. what Jer Jer Jersey is so unique. When there's a Bruce sighting in Jersey, it like travels. Oh, saw so Bruce. Bruce will be here. Bruce is gonna be here, and then like you know, and people go. Yeah, they will go there. <laughs> so we went back to Bradley Beach. We couldn't find him or the car, right. and I said, "What are you guys doing right now? I have to go to this boat show. Do you want to go with me?" And they're like, "Sure, we have nothing to do." So we head to Asbury. We park our cars, and all of a sudden, I see the car coming down the street, and I was like, uh, "Guys, <laughs> here comes the car." Bruce gets out of the car and he looks at me and he's he's laughing. He's like, "You found me." <laughs> <laughs> and I, two pictures. I took two pictures. Wow, and that was it. That's a great. That is a great cover. When you think of you know, especially how big a star he is, but in that area, you know, he's a god. And uh, he looks very. Uh, he had no bodyguards with him, just walking by himself. During that, he had a video camera in the back because they were filming scenes of right. him driving around. And then what happened after that, there's another picture in the book of him dressed up as an old man. Right. They were filming the One Step Up video. Right, I remember and that, yeah, yeah, So the three of us, we snuck our way in, and they kicked us out. We went back in, they kept kicking us out. And then at one point, the director said, listen, I admire your perseverance. You could stay, just don't get in the way. Okay. And then Billy was actually filmed quite a bit, which never made In the video? video? Oh, in the okay. video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Steve and I were watching this, and we were happy for him, but we were a little jealous, like, oh, he's getting all this air time. Right, right, right. And then at one point, the director came over to us and said, we want you to do a walk-by. And we said, what's a walk-by? He said, just walk back and forth real slow. Don't look at the camera. Go, go real slow. And it was last year that I was actually watching the video, and in the background, I saw the two of us. But if you blink, oh, cool. if you blink, you miss us. Well, you can see it. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. You know, it is great to do a book like this. It's uh, like, I can't get enough of Springsteen. I'm one of those Jersey guys. I'm a Springsteen guy. And uh, when I was 11 years old, I heard Darkness on the Edge of Town for the first time when it came out. My older cousin had it. And I was just hooked on it because I did anything my older cousin did. And he told me, that's the boss. And, you know, you got to respect the boss. And uh, I, you know, when I was 15, when Born in the USA came out, so my first uh, real concert at a stadium was uh, summer 84. And, uh, you know, there'll never be a rock star like this guy again. Or like the old rock stars. You know why? Because there can't be. Mm -hmm. Because it, there's, there's no way to create mystique anymore. You can't become famous from mystique. You almost have to go on American Idol or this or that. You have to go to award shows. Like, people don't realize, everybody goes to award shows now. Even the edgy people go. In the 70s and early 80s and 60s, None of these guys went to award shows. The Stones and Bruce didn't go to Grammys. and It was just word of mouth. Like, you got to see these guys. They're, they're great. You had to get the album. You had to mm -hmm. listen to the whole thing. And the way he wrote and created these characters on the Jersey Shore, he became a ghost in a way. And the uh, sightings were like seeing a, 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 some sort of god in Jersey. And that's why books like this about a guy like him are way more special than it would be about the biggest star now. Because they... And I, you know, look, I don't blame the guys now. They got to play the game to get big, but they, they're forced, you know, through Viacom and major corporations. You got to come to our award show. You got to walk the red carpet. You got to be this commercial person. Back then, they they got bigger by not doing that. But how many how many musicians of his caliber do you know are going to jump on stage at a local club? 
and that's the other. Well, that's the other thing too. Like just unannounced, he'll just show up and go, "Hey, at a bar, mm -hmm. I'm here." And that's you know, it's also it's a cool thing that he likes doing. Probably it's also a brilliant marketing thing when you think about it. It creates the it adds to the legend. But you have you to know? wonder why other musicians don't do that. Like, do, it kind of makes me wonder: Do they really love to play live? He'll get up there and they're probably of... not good enough. That's the other thing; they're not good, good enough. You know, yeah. like like the other musicians are like, look, don't do that. Their managers like, if you do that, you'll be exposed for sucking. You know? <laughs> yeah, with the uh, overproduction yeah. that yeah. goes into a lot of the music nowadays. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, you know, you got the auto tune and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, some managers have to sit down. I bet they want to do it, but some other managers got to go. Listen, you suck, and we're <laughs> we're protecting you from from that. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, like you're, you're bull crap is what yeah. you are. <laughs> no, these so guys aren't. There, yeah, there are guys like the 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 standby guy, like a Neil Young, will go and play right. a concert for right. five hours. Yeah. You know, he wants to be there more than the crowd does. And they're good at He'll it. He'll just well, keep playing. He well, just the wants woman we to just had here, her, her voice, like you know, oh, she could get oh, up right. on oh, she could get up on any stage somewhere and just start belting out a song. You know, she's gonna sound good. There's people like like Miley Cyrus is probably not going to just show up at a bar and sing because <laughs> people will start throwing stuff at her. Even yeah. though she named her album after Bruce Wrecking Ball. <laughs> Did she really? Right. That's her latest album. Her latest album's how she get away with that? Maybe Let's she not go got there. His is her is her latest album really the yes. same exact she title? Got his <laughs> yeah. to that? Did what? she ask to do that? Did she I mean... Google the name for? <laughs> you think she thinks she's going to become bigger than Bruce? I, well, I Bruce? guess it's just two different <laughs> uh, people buying it. You know. But it's just again, it's like uh, he doesn't even like care about Twitter or anything like that. Or like, he's just playing good music, you know. It's, uh, uh, so I, I like it. But how long did it take you to do this book? Thirty-two years. Thirty-two years of going. <laughs> Look at the and, cover, nineteen eighty to two thousand twelve. No, I mean, I, 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 like, did you start out with the with the purpose of making a book, or just like no, uh, one day you sat down a few years ago and said, "I'm going to make a book." No, I mean, it, when I first picked up the camera, my dream was to get to this point. I never, ever thought it was going to happen. I, right. you know, and there was a whole bunch of people along the way that tried to drag me down and say, you know, you're never going to make it. Find something, find another career. And right. I just never quit. And I just, you know, my, my, the way I am is if somebody tells me I can't do something, basically I'm pretty much like, yeah, watch me. Right. I'll do it. Well, I, I, I admire you so much for how, again, you know, we live in an era where everyone has a camera now. Everyone, everyone. has a good quality camera. You know how many times, I, I saw him three different times at the Stone Pony, the last time being 92, where he played till five in the morning mm -hmm. with Southside, all three times mm -hmm. with Southside Johnny. And uh, you know, I don't have many pictures of it, I just have memories of it. Um, you had the smarts back then to take a camera and, and like there's a lot of Stone Pony stuff in here, so right? There's a whole section for clubs, Stone yeah. Pony, Wonder Bar, um, I think Cheers may be in there. So what would you do? Would you were they unannounced visits that you sort of heard a rumor that he was going to be the, there? And the very first, I missed him probably between 15 and 20 times in the early 80s. I went to school in Rochester, New York, right. and my father's going to hear this for the first time. I would just be in Rochester. I'm like, I have to get to Asbury. I just <laughs> I have to hear music. I have right. to get in Asbury. So I got up in my old beat up Dodge Dart. And I drove like the seven plus hours to get there. If you went 50 miles an hour in this car, the car shook. Wow. And I would show up. I would leave at about a quarter to two and I would drive the seven hours back to Rochester. You know, when you're young, you can do that. Right. <laughs> and I would find out, oh, he showed up at two o'clock. Uh -huh. I missed him by 15 minutes. And this happened, I think the summer of 82, probably at least 15 times. So the first time I actually saw him there, it was July 31st. 1987, I went for Marshall Crenshaw. Love Marshall Crenshaw. Right. And I'm right in the front, taking pictures. Love Marshall. And unbeknownst to me, but all my friends knew Bruce was here. And I didn't know it. Okay. And Marshall comes back for the encores and he says, I understand the most famous rock star in the world is here, Bruce Springsteen. Right. And everyone claps. Bruce doesn't take the stage. And I'm like, I'm here. I'm right in the front row. I can't believe he's not going to get on the stage. <laughs> Marshall sings another song. He announces Bruce again. And I'm like, come on, I'm right here. And he right. jumps up on stage and they sing a couple songs together. And then two nights later, it was the whole E Street Band. Oh, wow. And a week later, it was the E Street Band. And that summer, the summer of 87, I don't even know how many times I shot him there, but it was just, and this was before cell phones. Right. So, you know, people would be, where are you going tonight? Where are you going tonight? And you would have to rush to a phone and right. listen to your <laughs> answering machine. Like, Bruce is at this club, Bruce is at this club. Yeah, in December of 91, me and my buddy Joey Petro went down to see Southside Johnny. And there was a rumor he might go. Uh, but we love Southside anyway, so mm -hmm. we went to the Stone Pony to see him. And uh, Southside went on at about 10 o'clock. At 1 a.m., we're standing, Stone Pony's side of the stage used to have a door where you came in from the outside, mm -hmm. and it was freezing cold. 
me and my buddy Joe were sitting there by the cold, and we're we just doing a bunch of shots. We weren't really freezing. We were we had liquor, uh, you know, jackets on. And um, uh, my buddy Joey points to the side. A blue Corvette pulled up, and he just pulled I have up. that picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue Corvette <laughs> pulls up, and he just pulls. He walks out by himself, and he just walks into the door. Just hiding the bouncer and stuff. He's standing right in front of me, waiting to go on stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, Southside starts singing, "You can't always get what you want." And uh, I said, "Bruce, how you doing?" And he took back his beer and he clanked it on my drink and he said, "Sometimes you just gotta do the stones, man." <laughs> wow. And that's what he said to me. And then he went on stage. He played till five in the morning. Wow. Uh, but uh, yeah, I got I got the whole thing. I, I I'm a guy. I buy into the to the Bruce thing and his music. When I first moved out to L.A., man, that music saved my life because. I was very lonely out there, and I, I listened to his records alone in cars and parking lots outside bars, like not knowing if I could make it out there. That's how it was early in my career. I lived in other states and really didn't have many friends. I was working for newspapers I didn't want to be at. Right. Same thing. His music yeah. his music saved my life. It changed my life. You know, I'd sit there, and I remember it was uh, 1984 or 85. I was in my apartment in Pennsylvania, and I was miserable and right. dancing in the dark. Playing Dancing yeah. on the Dark, you know, yeah. happy song, right? Right, right, right. And I'm dancing around my apartment with a T-square, dancing <laughs> on the coffee table. And I just sat back and I thought, well, this is a happy song. Right. But it was like my uh, life. It sounds happy when you think about it. Yeah, it's but the it, lyrics. It, it was like, like my life. I just, right. I was I was tired and bored my, with myself. It's like, hey there, baby, there's something happening somewhere. And it was like, that's the Jersey Shore. I, right. I want to get to the Jersey Shore. And I remember it was a couple months after that, I said, I, I, I hate it here. And my mother kept telling me, quit quit. You can move home. I right. lived in North Jersey. And I said, I can't quit. I'm never going to get another job. I'm not that good. I'm lucky enough to have a job. <laughs> and I, one day I went in and I said, I, I have to leave here. And I gave my notice. Two weeks later, I went in with my key, put it on the editor's desk. And I said, it's a town full of losers. And I'm pulling out of here to win. <laughs> Moved home with my parents, terrified that I'm never going to get another job. Two weeks later, got a job for a paper at the shore. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about the Born to Run record. It's all about getting out. Like, get out. You, you yeah. can get out. You can do the right thing. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Well, the book is great. Uh, we got to take a break. You stick around a little bit. Yeah, uh, sure. Talk a little bit more. Uh, we'll be right back uh, with uh, Deborah. She wrote, uh, well, wrote and took pictures and put together a book called Bruce Springsteen in Focus, 1980 to 2012. Uh, check it out in stores now. Deborah L. Rothenberg, back here today. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.